And welcome back. A 2019 study found 30.4% of youth in foster care identify as LGBTQ and 5% as transgender. JCCA offers a safe space for those who identify as members of this community. With their programs and services, they provide the highest quality child welfare, as well as mental health services to more than 17,000 children and families every year. Joining us now to tell us more, we are pleased to be joined by Sierra Scipio, who is the youth coach at JCCA. And uh, good to have you. Hi, it's good to be here. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. So you got some great work that you're doing, and you're dealing with this population. Mm -hmm. And talk to us about the work within this population, because we know it's emerging, and the needs are many. Yes. So my department offers lots of services for youth. Um, we offer educational services. We help them get into college. Uh, we help them with vocational services. We even offer to pay for their driving lessons. So we're, we're trying to give them, get them on the right foot. Yes. Right. And so as I know you start off as a client, yes. right? And then you worked your way into actually servicing. What were some of those needs that you found yourself uh, as a client that you're now able to translate back over to the ones that you work with? So when I was a client, uh, the my program didn't exist. My youth coaching program didn't exist. And I always wanted someone who had lived experience in foster care to kind of like tell me what to do or give me a blueprint. How do I, how do I navigate this? Um, I would always say to my workers, you know, you would go home at the end of the day. I, you can clock out and this is my life. So I like the fact that I'm able to use my experience in foster care as an alum to help my youth. Yeah. So as you help your youth out right now, what do you think find it to be some of the more prevalent things that they need uh, in this time, in this space? I feel like a lot of my youth, especially my queer youth, just need a lot of compassion and acceptance, freedom to dress how they want to dress and love who they want to love and more inclusive homes and inclusive staff. Mm -hmm. What do you think Pride Month means to them? For, for my queer youth, I think Pride Month is an opportunity and a chance to dress how they want to and, and use their pronouns and actually feel safe in a space with me as their youth coach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of stigmatism that's associated with it and really trying to, you know, break down barriers and really have m effective methods so that way people can feel, you know, valued. Yes. Talk to us about that because there's a lot of people who just, you know, they're roaming out there. They don't necessarily feel valued. You talk about foster care, that's one thing. And then you talk about LGBTQ, mm -hmm. that's a, a whole nother. And you combine the two together, that could be a lot on a young person's shoulders. I don't, I totally understand. I do agree with you. I do think that it was a lot, especially me growing up in the system as a queer youth. I struggled to find a sense of community. We didn't have such a heavy community in the youth coaches that we, we did before. So I'm happy that I can provide services to my kids. Yeah. So as a youth coach right now, what do you feel is like your main objective when you have your young people in front of you? My main objective for my youth, and youth that even aren't on my caseload, for all of the, the young people that come into the office, I want to provide them with a comfortable, safe area in which they can feel happy talking to me. I have a youth that will tell me, this happened at school, can you help me? Or a youth that's like, come with me to driving classes or let's go get Starbucks, anything. It just feels like I'm, I'm there to be someone's best friend and be someone's support system, and that means a lot to me. Yeah. So what can we as a community actually be doing better? Because obviously there's, a, there's work that we could be doing mm -hmm. uh, to make life just a little bit easier and or better. So what can we do? For youth or for yeah, my queer for youth? You. For youth, I do believe education. I, I do believe that the, the public should be educated on the struggles that youth go through. Less of the, there's a lot of, how do you say it? Um, there's a lot of stigmatism that's going on with the youth and it leads them to a bad place. Lots of support. I believe that raising the age for support to 26, 27 might be very helpful in, in helping people because a lot of youth end up homeless. Yeah. When we talk about queer youth, though, what can we do? For queer youth, I do believe that there need to be ways that we can support them, like safe sex education seminars and gender, um, a way that they can practice their gender identity and more inclusive foster homes. I do believe that that is a big deal. Right. So do you find that more people know about the queer population or are you finding that there's a population of people who just don't know? I do feel like there's a population of people that are misinformed. And I think that 
some of the homophobia can come from miseducation. And, you know, we one day at a time and we can just be who we are and we're not going anywhere. And Right. Yeah. How would you define queer for somebody who just says, I don't know? They don't know what queer is? Yeah. I'd, well, in my definition, I define queer as just I am loving who I want to love. I see partnership and all of the genders. Um, I do not discriminate. And I, some people think that that's wrong. And that is their opinion. But I refuse to live my life in a box. And I want to be an inspiration for my youth that look up to me and say, wow, this, this queer person is in this space. This foster care alum is in this space. That's an inspiration. I want to, you know, it, there's a double for that. Right. Mm -hmm. So now you have services that actually support. Yes. Right? And so give us a little bit about those services that are actually available to anyone who feels, you know, they need them. We have peer support groups that we do. I work specifically in the Bronx Agency, but they're agency-wide. We have peer support groups that we do. We just had a event. We had a Pride event in Brooklyn um, this past Friday that went amazing. Lots of youth showed up. They made tie-dye t-shirts. And we respect each other's pronouns mm -hmm. in the office. Yeah. yeah. And so for somebody who wants to be connected, what do they do if they're saying, hey, listen, you know, I really feel like I need an outlet. And Sierra's helped me out right <laughs> now because she's, she's giving me some information mm -hmm. and making me feel like there's a safe space for me. I would say um, if they had a coach, talk to the coach. Um, coaches are literally advocates for the youth. They don't work with foster parents too closely. They don't work with the case planners too, too closely. It's basically a built-in best friend. We want them to feel comfortable coming to us and saying, hey, I, I'm experiencing some homophobia uh, at school, or what do I do, or I don't know if, is this right? Um, I want to dress differently. I want them to feel comfortable coming to us. So I think that they should reach out to their educational department, their LEAP department, and their case planners, and you know, we can work something out for them. We don't yeah. want them to struggle. How's it from, your, you got boots on the ground, so you mm -hmm. can give us a little bit more intel on this one here, but how is it going for, Queer students in school, is it getting better? Is it seeming like there's more homophobia? It that's that's a tough one because there's always gonna be homophobia. That's always gonna be mm -hmm. a problem that we do have. My job for my youth and the youth that come into my office is to let them know that I'm here for them. And if there was a problem going on in their school, that I would definitely see to it personally. Because yeah, that's a touchy subject for me. I want to make sure that all of my youth are protected and, and feel safe. They right. deserve that. They right. deserve that space. Right. Totally, 100% agree, Sierra. Cynthia, thank you so much for being with us, and congratulations on the great work that you're doing. Now, if somebody wants to get connected, she is a youth coach at JCCA. Thanks yeah. so much. Yes, thank you for having me. All righty. Now, if you want more information, you can visit the website at jccany.org, and then also follow them on social media at JCCANY. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more open coming up right after this.